hey, didn't see you there. So today I'm going to be saying part 3 of the Feral Lore Iceberg series. Um, be sure to watch part 1 and 2 if you haven't yet, because you might not understand some stuff in this video without watching the previous episodes of this series. Also, full credit to this iceberg goes to Wild Human and you slash error code. So now, on to level 3. The first thing on level 3 of this iceberg is Valkyrie Home Planet. So Valkyries are the species of bird NPCs in Feral. The Valkyrie home planet is mentioned in many different item descriptions, and apparently they migrated from a different planet to planet Feral a long time ago. Kidbolds are from the Betwixt. So the Betwixt is known to destroy stuff inside of it, and the Kidbolds have dark markings on them. It's possible that those markings are from the Betwixt, and it's also possible that the Kid Bold's memory issues could be from the Betwixt. I used to not completely believe this theory until recently when the Queens of Feral, Aradia and Delilah, were found to be in the Betwixt, so I think this theory is possible now. Wanted posters in Shattered Bay. The wanted signs in Shattered Bay have an unidentified criminal. It could be a member of the Secret Society or a Komodori or a Pilfermite. I wish we knew what the Shattered Bay language says so that we were able to read this, but I'm not even sure if that language is decodable. Hacked information slash file snooping. So hacked information has previously been an issue in the feral community. When people leak feral updates, it can really mess up Wildworks' plans to market those updates. You're allowed to go into the files and look at stuff that has already been released for feral. For example, in feral archives, they went into the files of feral and found some assets put on the website. But on the official feral discord and other feral places, you're not allowed to post leaked or hacked images. Blood tundra water is caused by iron. So in real life, iron can turn water red, but also in real life, it's not possible to have a lake of blood because all the blood would like just disappear, like evaporate, I think. Yuzubo. So I hope I'm saying that right, but Yuzubo is a cat that stands on a blood tundra balcony. This cat isn't a Senri spark because it doesn't have a spark on its forehead. So it could be a ghost pet like Root Pup. Once you press E on this cat, you get an inspiration. I think if we get pets in Feral, this might be what they look like. Vexrat Extinction Vexrats are a species in Feral and they're supposed to be extinct. The NPC End says in a quest, Shoes is a real vintage plushie of the now extinct Vexrat who must be taken out for rest share daily. The issue with this statement is that we actually know about a living Vexrat. There's one Vexrat in the Blood Tundra and its name is Pants. So it's really strange that this species is supposed to be extinct, but here we have one of them still in the Blood Tundra. Athena's Greenhouse Athena's Greenhouse is a fan-made name for a green building in City Farah that we can't enter yet. My theory is that we might get assigned quests or get wings there, because on the front of the greenhouse there is an owl symbol and a wings symbol. Riftwalker So a Riftwalker is mentioned in the Rift walker set, obviously. They're supposedly creatures that can walk through the Betwixt and are guarded by a magic dog. The Betwixt is known to destroy stuff, so the Rift Walker must be very powerful. Also, eventually we're gonna have to go save the queens from the Betwixt, so maybe the Rift Walker will help us or we'll all have to become Rift Walkers. Twiggle Names The Twiggles used to have no name and all be named Twiggle, which is pretty sad, but luckily now they all have different names. Combat progress. So many months ago, there was a feral survey sent out to random closed beta players on what they think of feral. One question of the survey was listing a bunch of features that are possible to be added to feral and you were supposed to vote on the one you like the most. One of the features suggested was multiplayer fighting quests against enemies like dungeons. I really hope we get multiplayer games or combat in Feral. Like, if we were to team up to kill stuff, it would give people something really fun to do in Feral and make the gameplay a lot more interesting. Latchkey's second floor. In Latchkey's lab, there are a staircase at the back of the lab that lead up to a second floor. Unfortunately, no one knows what's up there because the staircase is blocked off with some vines. If you go outside of Latchkey's lab, there's a big tower thingy, so my theory is that those staircase will lead up to the tower, but I don't think we're gonna get access to the tower anytime soon because I don't know what they would put up there. Blood Tundra Singing 
So if you listen closely to the Blood Tender song in some areas, you can hear singing, and I'll play a clip right now. Okay, so now you've heard the clip, and I think it may be the tree singing, because in some of Vesta's dialogue, she says that the tree sings. Thera City Broken Building. So this is referring to a broken building in the middle of City Fera. This broken building is right beside a glowing well, and it looks really suspicious. I'm not sure if it was magic or just like a haunted building that somehow got damaged. Rotations. Rotations are a feature that used to be in Feral, but they're now abolished. So a long time ago, um, every three days the land would rotate, and when that happened, there would be new chests, new quests, and new lockpicks in a specific land. The rotation feature kept people engaged in the game because they had to log on every three days to collect all this stuff, but it was also really stressful if you missed a day or missed a rotation and then fell behind. And in November, this feature was abolished. Okay, last one is the clock tower. So you've most likely seen this huge clock in City Fera. But did you know that the clock is actually working and it's possible to read this? The colorful rim on the outside of the clock shows what time of day it is. And there are hands on the clock for hours, minutes, seconds, and days of the week. You can also read the numbers, and I'll put up a graph right now on the screen so you can see how the numbers translate. It's really interesting that this clock actually has its own numerical system. Once again, that's all for this video. Come back next week if you want to see part four, I think. Remember to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed, and if you didn't enjoy, then remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Okay, bye! Thanks for watching!